overseer of Voice of Freedom Ministries International, with headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, a man called and specially anointed to set the captives free. It doesn't matter how long your situation has been. It doesn't matter how long the crisis in your marriage has gone on. I know one thing. You are coming out. Known all over the world as an apostle of deliverance. That suit has tormented your family for 40 years. In the name of Jesus. Shall be broken. It broken. Shall be broken. It shall be broken. It broken in the name of Jesus. An outstanding teacher and preacher of the world. With deep insight and understanding. The devil will leave you under the anointing, but will return on the foundation of doubt. Spanning over three decades in the deliverance ministry with undeniable testimonies, signs, and wonders following. The author of the bestsellers, Altar vs. Altars. Discover to rediscover. Witchcraft manipulations exposed and the ever popular Lose Him and Let Him Go. His ministry has seen him widely traveled in Africa, Europe, the Middle East, and USA. The Lord say, I will perform what you see. If you see total freedom, say it. If you see that you are going to get married, say it. And now, in the power and might of the Holy Spirit, Let's receive the dynamic ministry of Bishop Abraham Chibundu. Each, each day God keeps you alive, it means he has not finished with you. If there is no other reason why you should be excited in your life, get excited that I am still here. In spite of all I have gone through, in spite of all the pains, I am still shame to the devil. Somebody have a hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24 We've been considering that verse We've been considering that verse Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24 Rise you up Take your journey And pass over the river Anon Behold I've given into thy hand Sihon, the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land, begin to possess it, begin to possess it, and contend with him in what? In battle. Everything that will make you outstanding in the land of the living has been given. Everything that will make you successful has been given. And, and there is a command here this morning. Begin to possess. Simply saying, begin to maximize what is given to you. And contend with him in battle. And that's where we stopped last week. Contend with him in battle. If it is given to me and is in my hand, what more do I need? And that is where many people fail because what is given to you, someone is interested. There is a force that is interested in what has been delivered into your hand and that force is ready to fight. Therefore, if you don't fight to keep what is given to you, what is given to you is taken from you. 
if you don't contend I said to you last Sunday prophecy wouldn't just come to pass because it's prophesied because the moment a prophetic word is released towards you there is a force that is after that prophecy not to be fulfilled a son is given born into Jerusalem and the news and the, the, the wise men say we saw his star as soon as the news went forth and the herald had it he came after the child businesses fell on this premise marriages collapsed on this when people fail to contend and fight, they never arrive. We looked into Luke chapter 10 last Sunday. And the man left Jerusalem and he was going to Jericho. He did not arrive. Why? The thieves attacked him. And John 10, 10 tells us that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. And I said to you, I was going to show you the thief. I'm not too sure if I will get to that this morning. The thief cometh not. They attacked him on the way. They took his garments. They wounded him. They took his substance. They left him half dead. And that is the experience of a lot of people attacked on their way to a place of honor on their way to success and reason why they didn't succeed is because they were attacked on the way and they were stopped if this man knew that it's possible that somebody trailing him if he knew that on this journey there could be some issues Probably he would have prepared himself. But he didn't know. Ignorance, the most expensive commodity in the supermarket of life, affordable by everybody. He didn't know. So he was a victim. And many of us are falling victim of what we did not know didn't know that a thief exists and when the thief comes in he does not come to play game with you he takes and we noticed that one of the things he took was his garment so he took what protected him and I told you last Sunday that that garment represents the colors of life that as long as Joseph was wearing the coat of many colors Nobody can sell Joseph. But for Joseph to be sold, the coat of many colors was taken from him. And some people have lost colors in their business, colors in their lives, colors in their marriages, colors in their, in their, in their finances, colors in their profession and career. But this morning, there is a restoration back to you. I wish I can hear somebody's amen louder. Turn quickly with me to Samuel, for Samuel, chapter number 30. We saw last week, they left him half dead. He wasn't alive and he wasn't dead. But somehow, he was hanging in there. 
the greatest mistake they, they made was to leave him just hanging in there. And I told you last Sunday, the devil could have killed you. He, he should have when he had a chance. But I've come to announce to you, he has lost the chance forever. I've spoken to seven people in the house. I say he has lost the chance of eliminating your life. Because henceforth, you will locate him. You will crush his head. Somebody say, I hear you. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag was smitten and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and he had taken the women captives that they were therein they slew not any either great or small but carried them away and went on their way so David and his men came to the city and behold, it was born with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives were taken captive. Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Camelites. David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself and the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Abimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the effort. And Abiathar brought hither the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. Can we read it together? One to go. Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail. Do what? recover all somebody say I hear please read with me verse 16 I want everyone to read one to go verse 16 and when he had brought him down behold they were spread abroad upon all the earth eating drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the philistine and out of the land of judah and david smote them from the three lights even unto the evening of the next day and there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled Verse 18, everybody want to go. And David recovered all that the Amalekite had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Verse 19, and there was nothing lacking to them. Neither small nor great. Neither sons nor daughters. Neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all verse 20 everyone and david took all somebody holla amen. amen in the month of september you will recover all amen. you will recover all I've just spoken to somebody. I've just spoken to somebody. A miracle is going to happen in the month of September. You will recover all. I cannot 
understand why God said, clean your tears, wash your face, put on a smile. It's not over yet. Though you've lost all, but you will recover all. He said, nothing was lacking. Not even small. Not even the big one. Everything they took, including the one they didn't take, the devil must pay back seven times more than what he took. Can somebody there receive it? Seven times more. Seven times more. Seven times more than what he took. Can I hear you say, I receive it? Seven times more. The thief invaded Ziklag. The thief always come when you are not aware. The thief always come when you are not prepared. David had gone to help King Achish and 600 men with David. There were 601. They left their wives, their children, their properties, everything. In their absence, the thief came. Your ignorance is the opportunity the enemy looks for. Your ignorance. The strongest weapon of the enemy of our destiny is our ignorance. Ignorance of what we should know. Ignorance of our spiritual capability. Ignorance of our spiritual environment. Ignorance that the thief is there. Ignorance that what you are looking for, someone else is looking for it. Ignorance that what you have got, the enemy is still interested in it. The enemy is still interested in what God has given to you. And that's why you say you shouldn't fold your hand. Contend with him in battle. Contend. Fight. With him. In battle. Defend your territory. And David lost all. And I'm speaking to somebody here this morning. It's like you lost all. He lost all. But can I tell you something? The only thing the devil takes is what he can say. There is something he cannot take. The thieves collect what they can see. But what they cannot see, they can't collect. Destiny is packaged and wrapped with God's glory. They can't see it. It's on the inside. Though they took Joseph's coat of many colors, they didn't take his dream. He can't take your dream. If only you can hold your dream and fight. Somebody say fight. And the, the enemy took his wives, took the children, took the properties, and they left. And David came back, back to the city, and found nothing. The city was raised with fire. Just imagine we are 600 men. Hope you know where there are 600 men. There will be more than David already had two wives, and I'm sure he's not the only one that had two wives. 600 men. So, how many women and how many children? Just imagine where such number of people occupied everything burnt with fire. What amazed me there was. They began to weep. They didn't cry. Because crying, I've told you here before, is I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Women do cry. Men weep. 
men don't cry. Men weep. You know why the men weep? When there is no solution. If there is a solution, men don't weep. Tears may come out of their eyes, but they are not. They are going to find answer. But in a situation where there is no answer, I just imagine 600 men weeping at the same time. I try to imagine the kind of music they produced. I try to imagine the kind of scenario that was there. And the Bible said they wept to the point they couldn't weep anymore. They lost their strength. Number one, they don't know which way the enemy went. They don't even know where to begin. Somebody's here this morning. You don't you just know how to begin. Let me tell you something. You are going to begin anyhow. Somebody shout amen. amen. And they took stones. It is easy to blame. Anybody in leadership. Why everything is going wrong. Boko Haram Jonathan. Ebola Jonathan. No light, Jonathan. No water, Jonathan. Bad roads in GRW way in Benin City, Jonathan. Everything is Jonathan. It's easy until you get to the position of leadership. They blamed him. You took us out. All of them took stone. 600 men took stone to stone one man. And he said to them, before I die, let me consult God. Can I consult God? In, in, in this your situation that you're crying about, have you spoken to God? Have you consulted? I'm not asking whether you prayed, but have you consulted? Consultation is different from praying. Because if you're going to consult, you will talk with the person that you're consulting with, and the person you will tell the person and listen to what the consultant will say. Am I communicating this morning? If you have a problem, I know that Ambassador Bamidele is a consultant. When people come and present their issues on their business issues, they talk and talk. You allow them to explain. Then they wait for you to prefer solution. But do you know what we do? We talk and talk and talk and talk. And so God has not anything to say. But here David consulted God and God gave answer. And this is where my, my issue lies. And God said to him, I agree that they took everything. I know that they rendered everywhere useless. I know they burnt everywhere with fire. But boy, rise up. Can I hear somebody say rise up? Rise up. Clean your tears. You are stronger than the enemy. God cannot ask you to pursue what you cannot overcome. He said to him, rise up, pursue. Let's fight. He said, you know what? You're not only going to pursue, overtake. Somebody say overtake. In the month of September, you will overtake those that are ahead of you. If you say louder amen than your neighbor, you're going to overtake your neighbor. He said, overtake. Overtake them. And he said, surely. Can I hear someone say, surely? Certainly. Without a doubt. You will recover all. Somebody say, I will. Recover all. I need somebody that know what he's saying. Say, I will recover all. I need somebody that believe it from his or her heart. Say, I will recover all. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want you to know in this month of September that is about to come, I will recover all that was taken from me. And neighbor, I want to prophesy to you you will recover all. Somebody shout all.
all all means all inclusive of everything to the exclusion of nothing all and David began the problem of life is not beginning is arriving is arrival it is one thing to begin it's a different thing to arrive if you look into the scripture 600 men began the journey and they began to pursue the enemy and along the line somewhere along the line something happened and what happened 200 men became tired They became tired. It, it, you know, some of sometimes you fast, you pray, you wait, you believe, you trust, and it's like what you're waiting for is not coming. One of the greatest weapon of the enemy is to discourage you. One thing discouragement establishes in your life is to reduce your momentum. And when your momentum reduces, everything about you begins to go down. Your zeal begins to go down. Your love for God begins to go down. The moment you come to a point where it's like what you're looking for, you are not likely going to get it. But there is no assurance that you're not going to get it. Your eyes may be saying you are not going to get it. Everything around you may say you're not going to get it. But God hasn't said so. And if God has not said so, hey, belt up. Strengthen yourself. You can win this battle. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Everything around you may suggest that you're a loser. Like, like what we're seeing here. That you have lost everything. But you've not lost your life. Life is a power. It's there. As long as there is life, opportunities will come. The dead have no chance anymore. The dead cannot take advantage of any opportunity. But the living can. Can I hear you say amen? The living can. You can. You can. Because your neighbor say, I can. 200 got weakened. To so everyone that is weak of pursuing your dream, receive strength in the name of Jesus. Take strength. Lift your hand and say, receive strength. August may have finished and none of your dream is in place. Can I hear you say, I receive strength? Ladies and gentlemen, what God can do in four months can shock your life. He's a God of wonder. It doesn't take, it wouldn't take him four months to rectify, to repackage, to bring you to where he went. Just one contact after this meeting can change your entire life. You may think no testimony has come for the last eight months. May I say something to you in the month of September? A testimony will hit your life. Don't give up. It is not over. When you give up, it is then over. I have tried. That is true, God knows. I've done my best. Your best is not God's best. For my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. 200 men, they came to a place there was water to drink. After drinking the water, they said, David, you know what? Enough. It's enough. I, I don't know whether you have come to a point where you are fasting and praying. And he got to a point you don't even know what to say again. 
You just lay on your bed. Say, God, my soul, are you still there? God said, I have not checked my address once. Do you still hear? God said, in fact, everything you said I heard. I don't know if you have come to that point. Where you are looking, you are not crying, but tears are coming by themselves. You look at food, you lose appetite completely from eating. Nothing gives you joy anymore, nothing excites you anymore. And if death hits you at that time, you are ready to go. That's the reason why people commit suicide. When I attempted suicide in 1972, in 1977, sorry, that was the reason why I attempted suicide because I just felt that there is nothing to live anymore. I didn't see it today. I didn't see it today. If I had seen today, I wouldn't attempt suicide. I wouldn't hate myself that much to drink poison. Reason why people give up because they don't see. They just conclude the devil has taken all. I've come to let you know he has not taken all. There is a remnant. And that remnant can produce whatever you are looking for. He has not taken all. He has not. There is a remnant. It was the remnant that produced what he took. If what is in you produced what he took, then what is in you can produce more than what he took. Somebody can I hear somebody say, I receive it. David left the 200 men. I'm trying to tell you, fight. God gave instruction. Prophecy will not come to pass until you do something. God said, pursue, overtake, and recover all. You're not going to fold your hands. As I conclude, hear this. You may think you are not making progress. But I tell you the truth. Every passing moment of your life that you are living, you are making progress. Each time you kneel down to pray, you are making progress. The only thing is, if you are traveling to Lagos and you have not arrived Lagos, that does not mean you have not been traveling. You are just on your way. It, the only thing is that you have not arrived Lagos. You could get to Ijebode, Ijebode is not Lagos. You could get to Shagamu, Shagamu is not Lagos. But Lagos is closer to Shagamu. So don't die in Shagamu. Am I speaking to somebody here? You are on your way. You have left your base. It's just that you have not arrived. The thieves may have attacked you on the way. That is not going to end the journey. A good Samaritan will soon locate you and he will carry you to where you will be healed. After you are healed, you will get out of the hospital. You continue the journey. Somebody saw we continue the journey. Hey! Come on! I will continue this journey. I'm not going to give up at this point. I'm not going to stay here. Agreed, I'm wounded. I'm in the hospital. My wound shall soon be healed. As soon as I'm healed, ah, I will start the journey again. But this time around, if I see any thief, ay, ay, ay. come on, give somebody a high five as I will continue. Glory to God. I feel like preaching this morning. I will continue. I'm not going to give up. If you think because I'm in the hospital, I will, I will come out. Satan, I will come out. Some of us are in the hospital of finance. Some of us are in the hospital of marriage. Some of us are in the hospital of business. Can I hear somebody with a love of Sam? I'm coming out. Listen to me. When I come out, I'm not going back to Jerusalem. I'm going to Jericho. I will hit my target. 
I will hit my target. I will locate what I'm looking for. The 400 men with David said, let's continue. Life is warfare. Fight. Fight to fulfill destiny. Fight to fulfill prophecy. Fight. 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 Somebody say fight. When, when Talena was around during think freedom or so, he told us a story. That story registered so much in my spirit, man, and changed the way I'm thinking. It added something. He said there was a drunkard. The guy is a drunk and he misbehaves big time. So anywhere he's in her room, from morning till night, his life was useless. Then he went to a native doctor and said to the native, I don't know why my life is like this. I want to find out whether my life will be better. The native doctor brought two calabash, one white, one black, and brought a wall gecko and spoke to him and said, Listen, if this wall gecko enter the black calabash, your life finish. But if he enter the white calabash, that means something good is still coming out of your life. And the native doctor made incantation and put the world gecko down. And the world gecko began to move towards the black calabash. The man ran and grabbed the world gecko and put in the white calabash. The native doctor Hala why would he say why would you do this he said ah, i go day here with my koro koro eye somebody shout i reason that and i said if the man that has lost his senses knows what to do that life is by force you can't just fold your hand and the devil is messing you up. Somebody say, I refuse. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, don't allow any man take what belongs to you. If it is yours, you don't fight to keep it, they will take it. man that is almost useless could have watched and said alright it's already done no it is not carry the wall gecko show the wall gecko what you want enter the white calabash whether you like it or not the bible says from the day of John the Baptist the kingdom of heaven suffereth what violence and the violent take it by force Five. Somebody say five. Fight. Stop complaining. Fight. Nobody has the same destiny with yours. Fight. Whatever is happening to you is happening to you because of your destiny. Fight. The mess you are going through is happening because of where you are going through. Fight! The mess is happening because of the miracle about to happen. Fight! The delay is occurring because when you arrive, you will make news. Fight! Fight! Somebody say fight! Don't let one stupid girl take your husband. Fight! If you fight 
on your knees the bible says watch and pray physical slap to a stupid girl is necessary when you pray and she's not hearing confront her some devil don't some devil need need some some slapping fight don't say god are you there they're taking my husband no sir god has given you the power to do what fight try to eat apple in the morning and meet her and say you are the one going out with my husband before she can explain give her seven slaps she will pull her shoe and run by force when he sees her husband one kilometer apart she will take to her heels somebody say fight fight because you are going to recover all what do you do fight fight on your knees fight while you are driving fight while you are eating fight while you are in the office for you to move from one position to another what do you do fight for you to complete this house you started seven years ago what do you do fight for your children to become what you desire them to become what do you do fight say contend with him in battle forget those that have left you keep on pursuing he left you because he wasn't good for you she walked away because she wasn't good for you continue there is something ahead of you and 400 men with david will continue pursuing and they met an egyptian boy of course you know the story the, just shortly after the people withdrew they met a contact the lord said to us this morning this journey will no longer be prolonged i believe that prophecy with all my heart he said this journey will soon come to an end he said i will i will make you to arrive how one contact lift up your right hand now say lord give me one contact that we end this journey shout the loud amen. amen that is the prayer i'm going to lead you to pray right now because i'm going to stop hear this they met one insignificant boy a slave boy listen who you meet here after this meeting matters a lot and don't look down on anybody anybody can be a solution when god is at work when the holy ghost is moving anybody somebody say anybody anybody can be a solution but sometimes because of your preconceived idea and method of how god will answer when the answer comes you don't recognize it and what you don't recognize and appreciate cannot benefit you sir these men are looking for answer desperate men they saw the young man how can you be talking to somebody who was half dead that's what god does great things sometimes come in rags and until you remove the rags you won't see that it was a diamond diamond is never picked in the streets gold is never picked in the streets you dig and it's inside rough inside rotten places you must wash to see the true gold and the true diamond they met him he needed food one of the reasons why we say to you go out and evangelize go and speak to somebody about jesus is because you may just win one soul and that is all that you need for life one insignificant soul as far as you are concerned 
who will connect you to what you've been looking for for the last 15 years and the moment you hit what you're looking for for the last 15 years your remaining 40 years is settled and secured somebody said i received this prophecy they revived him in other words there is need to invest in somebody for where you are going that's what they did they revived him there is need to help somebody to help you get to where you're going there is need to assist somebody to get up he might be the one you're looking for and the guy was indeed and the guy took them and showed David where the thieves are or where the thieves were the issue is locating the thief on Tuesday I will let you know who this thief is and time is gone the secret to recovery is locating the thief when you locate the thief you locate what he has stolen is that correct uh -huh. when you locate the thief you locate what he had stolen the little boy was a catalyst to show them where the thieves were and when David arrived he said look at them and David saw them they were eating drinking and what dancing Ow! ladies and gentlemen I just want you to have this imagination right now that God sent you one billion naira since eight years ago and somebody took it And now God connected you to somebody who took you to where your one billion was kept. And when you reached there, you saw your one billion. What will you do? I don't know what you will do. Me, I go remove this coat. I go take away this trouser. I will wear short knicker. I will fight like a wounded lion. I've just given you an illustration. There may not be a physical one billion. There might be a place where one billion is kept for you. There might be a venture a, a business venture where one billion is kept and you have been hindered that's what Paul said he said great and effectual door is open as chapter 16 and he said there are many what adversaries you don't leak carry ice cream in your hand and be licking and approaching adversaries they will slaughter you before you get there you confront the adversary one of the greatest things you will do to yourself is put your enemy in the position where they belong to do not in any form underestimate or underrate your enemy put him where he belongs to David looked at them it was very early in the morning David fought from that time until evening. And the Bible says he recovered all. Can I hear the church shout? All! Stand to your feet. And 
David recovered all. There is no way David could have recovered all if he didn't locate the thief. This service I'm taking is taking you to somewhere. I'm taking you to somewhere. I want you to locate where the enemy kept what he took from. Do you know what I observe here? The two wives of David were still intact. The Bible says they did not lose anything. Great or small, he recovered all. He took all and he came with all. Pursue, overtake. If you don't recover all, it's a wasted energy and effort. If you pursued and overtook and did not recover all, hear my prophecy. You must have evidence to show before 2014 is over. I only had the MM of 75 persons here. Two prayer points. Lord, show me the tips. Lord, help me to recover all. Dave, the moment David saw, he fought. He fought. Open my eyes to see the thieves and all they took from me. And God help me to recover all. You ready to pray the prayer? I can't hear your rest now. Are you ready to pray the prayer? Do you believe that this morning? Ladies and gentlemen, what he took from me may not be what he took from you. Some of us, he took our health. You must get it back. Some of us, he took your favor. You must get it back. Now that everybody around you is hating you, why? Why would they hate you? What did you do? Nothing. He took the glory. Lift up your right hand. With a loud voice, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for your word. For your word. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Show me. Show me. Where the enemy is. Where the enemy is. The thieves. The thieves. That collected. That collected. My treasures. My treasures. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Show me. Show me. Are, are, are you ready? Listen. The Lord says, My people are destroyed for lack of what? Nothing works until you make it to work. Nothing succeeds by itself until you force it to succeed. You need relevant knowledge to know where it is. You need the information that will help you know who this enemy is, where he is. You shall recover all. Amen. Somebody said, Catch the thief. Catch the thief. If your hand say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Anoint me. Anoint me. To recover all. To recover all. I'm going to give you two minutes to pray right now. Say, Lord, Lord, right now, right now, I receive, I receive power, power to catch the thief, to catch the thief and recover all. And recover all. Open your mouth and turn it into prayer. Until I come your way again, I want you to know that God loves you. To those of you that you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me. My Father, I am sorry for everything I have done wrong. Please, Lord, forgive me. Jesus, come into my life. Change me and make me a new person. I receive you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray this prayer, you cannot get to Voice of Freedom, but there is a living church around you. Take your Bible and go to that place and begin to worship God. God bless you. Thank you for watching this message. Keep a date with Bishop Dr. Ibrahim Chibundu to order for this message and other messages by Bishop Dr. Ibrahim Chibundu. Please call these numbers on your screen 